Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today's video, we are going to discuss about the activation functions. What are activation functions? Why we need activation functions? And six most commonly used activation functions. So let's get started. Uh, activation functions are basically, uh, you know, uh, are the component inside a neuron. And activation function basically decides whether a neuron should be activated or not. This means that it will decide whether the neurons input to the network is important or not in the process of prediction. Uh, basically, um, if you assume that, let's say, if I say that, uh, no, I do not need any activation function. So what will happen in that scenario? So you can see that uh, inside this is, a, let's say this is my one neuron and I do not have any activation function inside it. Then you can see that it will be left out with this only, which is weighted sum and which is more or less equal to a linear regression equation and linear regression equation, which represents a straight line, only a straight line. So, uh, and uh, not every data in the world have a straight line data, a straight line pattern uh, um, among its variables. So there are uh, real world data which have different pattern inside uh, among its variables. So without activation function, if we will have only have weighted sum inside a neuron, so it is more or less, more or less we are just doing a straight line calculation and it will not help our model to learn the complex pattern uh, inside the data. And that's why our model will not perform better and it will perform really poor. So that's why we need activation function. So this is the part that, that why we need activation function. Now coming to different type of activation functions, uh, I'm going to discuss different type of activation function, how they look like, what is their formula and in what scenario of that particular activation function is used. Now, one more thing uh, before going ahead, I want to make it clear that um, this is this, uh, these details I am sharing with you guys uh, that so that you are aware about a particular activation function. Otherwise, these uh, activation functions are already implemented inside the uh, Python libraries or the different languages which you use for data science, let's say R as well. So you just name the uh, activation function and uh, the neural network will be consuming it. So it's not like that you have to implement them from scratch. They are already implemented. You just pass as in their name as a value uh, inside a parameter and uh, that function will be used in that particular neuron. So, um, it, this is just for the educational purpose that in what's in a, uh, what, uh, what particular uh, activation function look like and in what scenario it is used. So now let's move on ahead with different type of activation functions. First, uh, first one activation function is this. Uh, binary activation function, as you can see that uh, pass the value uh, for any variable, let's say x, my f of x will be 0 if my x is less than 0. That means any value for any value of x which is less than 0, this function will be 0. And any for any value which is greater than uh, any value of x where x is greater than or equal to 0, this function will be 1. So you can say that, you can see that this function will output as 0 or one or in other words if i say that false or true or no or yes so as you can see from these general things this is basically used in the classification problems whereas in we need to uh, predict among the, uh, two classes yes or no true false uh, this type of so this is where this binary step activation function is used now next moving on to the next activation function, which is linear activation function, which is, uh, which again represents a straight line equation. So uh, we, this is used in linear regression um, models, basically linear regression or an, any regression related problems, basically. So, um, and this linear activation function is used only once in the output layer. So basically, uh, whereas in we, uh, let's say if you are having some problem like whereas in we need to predict the price of a house, price of a car, uh, something like that. So where we have our output variable as a continuous variable. Our output is our continuous variable. So this is where this activation function is used. 
And now moving on to the next activation function, which is our sigmoid activation function. This sigmoid activation function, this is the formula, one divided by uh, one plus e to the power minus x. You pass the value of x here and uh, it will uh, do the calculation. And let's say f of x will come out some value. And this value will always range between zero to one. And if you pass any value of x here, this value uh, f of x value will always range between 0 to 1. So therefore, it is especially used for models where we have to predict the probability as an output. Since the probability of anything exists only between range 0 and 1. So sigmoid is the right choice basically. So you would have understood that in any scenario where we have to do classification or we want our output in form of some probability uh, in, in the range of 0 to 1, uh, this function uh, we can use in the uh, in those particular problems. Moving on to the next activation function, which is our 10H activation function. This is more or less similar to the sigmoid activation function. Uh, in some scenarios, um, in some scenarios, this sigmoid activation function do not perform well. So in those scenarios, we use 10H. That's the only difference. And if you see it carefully, that formula for both of these 10 uh, these activation functions is almost similar. So you can see that 2 divided by 1 plus e to the power uh, minus 2x minus 1. Uh, uh, this is the 10h formula. And the, as you can see, 10h is also like sigmoid, but it is better than uh, in some scenario. Guys, once again, I'm going to clear that you do not have to remember all these formulas. You do not have to remember the implementation. You do not have to remember the uh, their graph as well. You just have to, uh, because a few things should be clear to you by, when you will be creating a model. Uh, in certain neuron, um, when you will be creating different uh, hidden layers of neurons inside your deep learning neural network, you have to def you have to give your activation function. And then at that point of time, you should be able to decide that uh, based on your problem, what is the right choice of my activation function for my particular problem. So that's why I am just giving you these details about these activation function. Otherwise, the basic things, uh, the required things are already implemented. You just have to go and it is kind of you just go and use them. So uh, the next activation function is ReLU activation function. You can see this is the graph and this is the formula f of x will be zero. If my x is less than zero, that means if my x value is less than zero, this f of x is zero. You can see here that this is zero and uh, this till this part, this is zero. And if my x of x is equal to zero, uh, then my f of x is equal to the value of x, whatever the value of x is. Nowadays, ReLU is the most used activation function in the world right now, since it is used in almost all the convolutional neural networks and deep learning problems. So guys, if at any point of time during uh, creating your deep learning model, you are not uh, uh, sure that uh, for that particular problem, what uh, activation function you should use, then by default, you just keep your eye, keep your eyes closed and use ReLU as your activation function by default. It will perform well. Um, it basically, it is used in 90% of the problems. And leaky ReLU is the is the is a kind of advanced version of uh, uh, ReLU function. As you can see that in some scenarios uh, now, when here in this ReLU function, when x was less than zero, this f of x was zero. So what will what it will help? What it will do? Now my uh, this is my let's say neuron. This is my weighted sum. This is my activation function. And now let's say for this activation function is ReLU. Now if my x value is my x value is less than zero, so this activation function will give me a zero. Uh, output of this activation function will be zero. That means output of this neuron will be zero. This zero will be passed to the next uh, next hidden layer. So which makes no significance. So to avoid these scenarios, we come uh, researchers come up with the liquid value. Whereas in when x will be less than zero, they are just not letting uh, the f of x to be zero. So they have multiplied it with uh, some constant value, which is very small value, 0 0.01. So that's the only difference. So to avoid this problem, uh, this problem is termed as dying ReLU problem. 
So to avoid this problem, they have come up with this leaky ReLU problem. So this is better than ReLU and solves problem introduced by ReLU. So these are the functions, uh, active, most commonly used activation functions, guys. And uh, I hope this all these all those all these things have have made sense to you. If you have uh, any questions related to activation function, deep learning, machine learning, uh, you guys drop you can drop comment in the video uh, in the video of this or any other video. Um, if you are an absolute beginner, uh, go just try check out my uh, complete machine learning playlist for absolute beginner. Um, and if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe it for more such interesting videos on data science, machine learning, deep learning, and AI part and all this stuff. So till the next video, guys, bye-bye, take care, see you in next time. Thanks all.